So guys, Napier's Asylum here. One of the things that I talked about in my last video was what kind of got me into the reptiles and even furthermore into the snakes. Um, as I've said before in previous videos, the reason why I got into the snakes is because I'm afraid of them, believe it or not. Uh, most of the time I tell people that, they think I'm nuts. Um, why would I have something that I'm afraid of? Um, I guess it's just the anxiety of getting bitten. Um, anything with a mouth can bite. So with that being said, there will be a point in time where I'm sure I'm bit and then at that point it will become numb to me or not necessarily numb, but less of a stressful situation. But with that being said, I wanted to introduce you to my very first reptile that I owned or I own, I should say. He is a gargoyle gecko by the name of Goliath. I got him at the Sin City show. This is his little enclosure. We'll see how well he behaves. I haven't handled him in a while, but usually he behaves very well for me. So, gargoyle geckos. What are they? They're from New, Cal New Caledonia. So the same place you see gargoyle geckos. Um, I'm sorry, crested geckos. My daughter's very first reptile was a crested gecko. So I'm going to bring up, bring him up so he, you guys can see him. See his little horns on his head. I know. They will fly, or try to fly, and trying to get a picture of him is often very difficult. But this is him. As I said, I'm trying to... There you go. Kind of see his little face there. Try to bring it back. He is a beautiful boy. He is a breeder. He has sired a couple eggs for me in the past. Unfortunately, I lost the babies. Not um, something I'm very happy about. Um, gargoyles, geckos do have teeth. They do bite. They do not drop their tails like crested geckos. So for me, I think gargoyle geckos are a much better uh, gecko to keep. But that's personal opinion. Uh, others will tell you that crusties are, are the best ones to keep. Some people will tell you leopard geckos are the ones to keep. So I rearranged down here in my asylum, as we call it, and brought down some of my or essentially everything down here except for two uh, female crested geckos that are in my daughter's room, four baby ge crested geckos that I got from a buddy who I traded um, some of my male gargoyle and female gargoyle to because he wanted to breed them. So I, I gave him, traded him. I got a green bottle blue tarantula and uh, a boy, a girl, and like four baby crested geckos after telling him I did not want any more crested geckos. <laughs> Ironically enough, as we were moving everything around, I found out that the female that I had gotten off of him actually laid two eggs. So, ironically enough, now I have two eggs that we're going to hopefully hatch. So, if you want to see that, I can definitely share that with you. Um, in regards to that, uh, I did have a bearded dragon, which I rescued. Um, then, well, actually, I have two bearded dragons that I rescued. And a bearded dragon that I have bought for my daughter. Um, I'm waiting for some UVB lights to come in for me to finish off the enclosures. I don't know what happened in the move. I think something happened with the fixturing where it no longer works. So, unfortunately, I can't show you those. Um... I do have some crested geckos. I do have a day gecko, um, a giant green day gecko, I should say. And as I said, a green bottle blue tarantulas. And two puppies. And if you can hear the squeaking in the background, that's the rats that I'm now starting to breed so I can feed my snakes. Um, circle of life, shall we say. Um, with that being said, almost had a total issue today with the watering system. Something jacked up with it. Uh, one of 
the rats actually pulled the nozzle out, which I don't know how they managed to do that, but they did that. So I've just spent the last hour cleaning that mess up and giving them new bedding and that, so, and that's fine. So you can see that, as I was gonna say, he's nice and calm, he's cool and collective. Um, calm down. But like I said, he does, he will bite if threatened. So I'm gonna put him back so he feels safe in his enclosure. Uh, they do take a powdered diet. So I, oh no, I feed mine Pangea, a breeder formula, high in protein. There you go. They also eat crickets. So that's my nice little boy there. I will say that the day gecko is not a gecko that you can typically handle. They are not tameable. So one thing about the gecko's eggs is you do not have to incubate them. You can keep them at uh, ambient temperature and they typically do fine and they hatch. You just need to put them in some uh, vertiline, I think is what they call it. I, I, Probably misspelling that, but I use Pangea Hatch. Pretty simple to use, keeping it at room temperature, uh, so they're not dependent upon the temperature to be incubated, like you see with snake eggs or anything like that. So that's the asylum as it stands today. Working on a couple things as far as increasing capacity. I did finally get the female paid off that you'd seen a couple videos ago. That will be the quarter that is the, probably the only female I'm going to have to breed this year. Unless I make the decision to buy another one. Um, it's 50-50 at this point. Just because I, I want to bring Orange Dream into my project. There's an opportunity to do that at a cost I don't think is exorbitant for a ready to breed female. What I'm hesitant is because the female was already bred this year in March. Um, being new to the breeding, I don't know if it's a, uh, obviously it's a yearly cycle, I, I believe with most breeders. Uh, but with that being said, I don't know if she would be able to be paired in November, December timeframe, which is what I'm looking at with the leopard spot nose pet clown named Cheetah. Uh, not that I'm putting the females together, they're lesbian. That would not make them lesbians and they wouldn't be able to produce eggs. Um, the plan is, hopefully, to take my banana clown, who's a female maker. And what that means is, uh, in theory, every banana that is produced, he will produce a female. Uh, so obviously that's a great potential there. Um, but there's a morph, well, not a morph, but there's a name for the banana Batman called a Scarecrow, which I'd love to hit. Um, I'd love to be able to bring in some different genes into that to make it pop a little bit more. Uh, maybe some red stripe eventually at some point, or even bringing out the, the banana a little bit more with the orange dream. Um, if you get a chance, check out Ozzy Boyd's. Um, Morph Market or his website. Um, he has some fantastic colors in the jeans that he works with as far as the clowns and the super orange dreams and all of that. So I'm kind of being inspired by him with some of the stuff. I'm also uh, taking some notes from my friend or my Facebook friend, I'll say, uh, Glenn, who runs 419 Morphs. Um, him and Kerr Reptiles um, hold a podcast every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please feel free to check them out as you wish. They bring a lot of insight. They bring in guests. They talk about the market. They talk about projects. They talk about, you know, some of the things that are going on. Uh, they also give you, Glenn's very good about being transparent. Uh, he just recently lost a female 
that I know he was broken up about um, emotionally, I guess, to a certain point, but the fact of the, what the female actually had as far as a gene combo, he was really excited to be able to see that. Um, so he's waiting for those eggs. Hopefully they come out and he gets to, to keep something that he's hoping for um, regardless. So good luck to him. So this has been a long one at one. This is 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So apologies for that. Feel free to skip. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. There is no hashtags. If you're seeing this, it's only because of the luck of the draw or the universe, whichever way you want to look at it. I do thank you for your time and watching. Thanks.